Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to teach you four tips about your DJI drone that you may have never considered. And I guarantee you that you didn't know at least one of these things. So no wasting time, let's get right down to it. What is the typical lifespan of a DJI drone battery? The battery is the life force of your drone and you should always do your best to take care of it to extend its life because let's face it, drone batteries are really, really expensive. Now the typical lifespan of a DJI battery is between 200 and 400 charge cycles before you'll start to notice any kind of performance decreases. Like you'll still be able to fly it and use it after 400 cycles, but you might just get a little bit less flight time, like 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute less flight time than you did when it was brand new. But actually the lifespan of your drone battery depends on a few things. So first of all, to get the maximum out of your batteries, you should avoid depleting it below 20% charge on a regular basis. Like you can fly it once in a while down to 10%, 5%, even all the way down to 0%. I don't recommend that. That's really, really hard on your drone battery. But if you are consistently staying to where you're not going below 20%, that's really gonna extend the life of your battery. Now also you should always try to store your batteries in cool, dry places. Drone batteries hate moisture and they hate heat. So if you can keep it somewhere, I don't know, in your home that's really dry and tends to stay cooler, that's going to help extend the life of that battery. And then finally, you should minimize the amount of time that you're using sport mode. Like if you're constantly flying your drone in sport mode, that's a lot of wear and tear on that battery. So if you do it once in a while, probably not going to make that big of a difference, but try to fly in normal or cinematic mode as much as possible. Don't get me wrong. It's fun to fly in sport mode, but if you're doing it all of the time, I would recommend that you stock up on batteries. Now, one more thing to note, you may have heard that you should store your DJI batteries at a 40% charge for maximum life expectancy, but that's actually not necessary any longer because these are smart batteries and they will self deplete to proper storage levels if they sit dormant for too long. So no longer are the days where you have to fly until you get your battery down to 40% and then put it away, at least with the newer drones, Maybe with the really old drones, like five years or older, you have to do that. But any of the more recent drones now, you don't have to do that. You can put them in the case at full charge and they're going to self-deplete to that safe storage level. They, they pretty much take care of themselves now when it comes to storage. And lastly, just keep an eye on your battery health, making sure that the cells are consistent with each other. And then if you want to see more detail on that, you can always use Air Data UAV software. Now, if you need a tutorial on how to use that software, I'll post one that a much younger Billy Kyle made a few years ago. I'll put it right up here and in the video description. But the bottom line is that your DJI batteries are going to last years if you take proper care of them. Next, what if you live in or maybe visiting a big city? Let's say Minneapolis, for example. I just got back from there. And you want to capture some beautiful images and video of the city skyline. But the problem is many of those buildings stand much higher than the 400 foot above ground level rule. For instance, a couple of the buildings that I just recorded this past weekend, they're about 900 feet tall. Now, what can you do to be able to capture all of these beautiful buildings if you can only fly up to 400 feet? Well, as a recreational pilot, there's really not much you can do. As a Part 107 certified remote pilot conducting a commercial flight, if you're within 400 feet of any of those buildings, you can fly up to 400 feet above them. Now, despite what some people believe, this rule does not apply to recreational flights. Even if you're near these buildings, you have to stay below that 400 feet above ground level if you're flying recreationally. But there are two solutions. First, and the most obvious one, is you can study for and obtain your Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate, which opens up a world of opportunities for anybody that owns a drone. It's relatively easy, you guys, especially if you use a study course like I did. I use Drone Pilot Ground School. I recommend them, but there's others out there as well. I'll put a link for them in the video description if you want to check it out and learn more about it. Anyway, like I said, you can earn so much money with the drone and a Part 107 certificate. And it's not just about the money, but it's being able to fly in more places, like being able to fly around skyscrapers. But if you don't want to go that route to be able to fly in these areas, then you can always find a Part 107 pilot and have them be your remote pilot in command. Like those people are responsible for the flight, but you can actually be the one manipulating the controls 
of the flight. Now, in this scenario, the Part 107 pilot would need to be right next to you and be prepared and able to take control of the drone if necessary. But watch this video right here to see why I think that everyone should get their Part 107. Now, this next tip may seem a little bit obvious to some people, but it's a question that I see often in the forums, and it has to do with satellites. So when you first turn on a DJI drone, you'll see that it sometimes takes a while to gather connections to the satellites above. You'll see a little number here by the little satellite. Now, the drone is not able to lock the home point until it has sufficient number of satellites. And typically, a drone is able to lock that home point once there's 12 or 13 or 14 or more satellites locked on. But that being said, you should never just go by that number that you see there. There are times where you can have over 20 satellites showing here, but the drone is still not able to lock on to the home point. So I recommend that you always wait to see and hear that your drone has established the home point before you take off flying too far away. Because what could happen is if your drone needs to return home unexpectedly, or if you engage the return to home thinking it's going to come right back to you, and it didn't properly lock on that home point before it left, you may be going for a walk to retrieve your drone, or even worse, it could land in an inaccessible area and you might not ever get your drone back. So always wait for that confirmation. Okay, one more thing I should say about return to home. Don't rely on return to home to bring your drone exactly to where you launched it from. Yes, in emergencies, that's gonna be important, but for the most part, use return to home to get the drone to as close to you as possible and then land it manually because sometimes it's not going to land exactly where you took off from and most of the time that's not going to be a problem but if you're in a really tight situation where you have to be sure that your drone is not going to land somewhere that's going to compromise your drone just land it manually because most of the time it's not exact it's going to be off even if it's off a couple of inches it's just best to use the sticks and land your drone by yourself and finally have you ever considered that you can do more with your drone than just fly it I know, it sounds strange, right? But here's the situation. So I did a real estate shoot recently and I really wanted to do a video walkthrough of it. And I wanted to see if I could do it with the new DJI Flip. Now, I knew it wasn't gonna be the highest quality imagery because you just can't beat using a gimbal and a high-end camera, recording a log when it comes to color and exposure. But my goal here was to see what it would turn out like using a relatively inexpensive drone. So when I first started flying in this property with the permission of the property owner, of course, the drone did pretty well. It looked really good. The colors were pretty good. But here's what happened. There were a few spots in the house where I actually lost GPS. So I was basically flying this thing in Addy mode. Now, it's not that big of an issue until I got into some tight spaces like the hallway and the laundry area and one of the bedrooms. And when you're flying in Addy mode and this wind is blowing around, you get that that prop wash basically, and the drones is going all over the place and I did crash it a couple of times. So what did I do? I just handheld the drone. I just hit record and I used the drone like a camera on a gimbal. And I think it turned out great. So for anyone that gets into a situation where you wanna have some smooth, stabilized footage and you can't fly because of safety or restrictions or the drone just won't fly, try recording in handheld. I think it's something that not a lot of people think about. So I wanted to mention it today. Sometimes it's fun just to think outside the box, you know, but I'll put that full video walkthrough at the end of the video here. So there's four tips that I hope you got something out of. If you did, I hope you click on that thumbs up today. Hey, what are the chances of you becoming a channel member? For as little as $1.99, you can join an exclusive club that allows you to have some bonus content and get to hear about giveaways before anybody else. And it's one of the best ways you can help this channel continue to grow. I do have something really big I'm working on right now. And the people in that 51 Drones membership are going to learn about it first. So I'm just saying, maybe you want to consider it. Now, I do want to sincerely thank you for watching the entire video today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.